he could have written a Marvel movie. Hello, welcome back to the Spoonie Stitcher channel. I'm Shannon the Spoonie Stitcher, you're inside the stitchery, and I'm so happy you're here today. You're here for the Decade Divas 1980s edition. If you want to know what the Decade Divas are, so I will explain. Here we go. But the Decade Divas was based off of the October Opals, which is what Teresa, Ashley, and I started last year, which is people who were born in October decided to get together and crochet stuff. We, we found three of us. There's more, but th that's how many we found at the time. So we called ourselves the October Opals and we did like a spirit week last year and that was a bit much for us. So we decided to uh, do it week by week and then we decided we needed more people. So we got more people to join us this year and they weren't all born in October. So October Opals had to go and Decade Divas was born. So we all chose a decade to host. So that's what it is and I'm afraid it's too late to participate with us because this is the very last day. Hmm, sad. But yes, this is the last day of the Decade Divas. If you liked this and you want us to do this again, you need to tell us in the comments section. We need to know. If we get enough interest, we might do it again. Uh, we'll see. Okay, today is the 1980s. Woo! And uh, for the 80s, I look awfully pale, don't I? <laughs> you were expecting bright neons and electronic colors, and I went a different route. <laughs> but today's host is Ashley at Gwinspired, and um, she's been hinting that she's got something really cool up her sleeve, so you definitely want to check out her video and all the other divas as well. Everybody is linked down below, but make sure you always watch the host video. If you need to catch up on all the videos, it is in a nice, neat little playlist that I designed, and the playlist is linked down below. So grab a hot beverage, get a project, and binge watch those videos if you want to. It really helps us out. On the 23rd day of the month of September, in an early year of a decade not too long before our own, the human race suddenly encountered a deadly threat to its very existence, and this terrifying enemy surfaced, as such enemies often do, in a seemingly most innocent and unlikely of places. Today I picked Little Shop of Horrors, 1986 Film Edition. Now we all know that of course it started on the stage first and Howard Ashman, the wonderful Howard Ashman, he started all of this. He fell in love with a 1960s horror movie, a very B horror movie, but it's very funny if you wanna watch it. And he thought this would make a great musical. <laughs> so he did that on the stage with the wonderful Alan Menken as his composer. Ashman wrote the book of the musical, uh, most of the directing and he did the lyrics for the songs. But on the stage, it starred Ellen Green as the character Audrey, whom they brought with them when they decided to do the film. For the film, they decided they wanted no one else to play Seymour, our protagonist, except Rick Moranis. And thankfully, he said yes. Really don't know if we'd have a movie if he said no. They didn't have a backup plan. So in 1986, we got a really fun movie. Now, I'm just gonna put something out there. You guys know I love trivia and I like to give you the behind the scenes and the story of how things are made and that kind of thing. I'm not doing that this time because this movie, play, story has been covered so many times by so many other YouTube channels. There's not anything new I can really tell you, except there are a couple of aspects people don't really touch on, and there's one I've never heard anyone touch on, and I know it was intentional because um, Frank Oz was involved. And Frank Oz loves little details. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the story of Audrey. Not Audrey too, just Audrey. 
So for those who don't know, the story is a boy, a girl, a plant, a sadistic dentist, a plant shop owner, all put to fun bop shoe bop kind of 50s almost music. I don't get it either. Anyway, um, Little Shop of Horrors <laughs> is a very dark comedy. I'm going to try my best not to spoil it for anybody who has no idea, but I think you at least know that the plant is a man-eating plant, right? Pretty sure everybody knows that. If you don't know that, I mean, just look at the playbill, the movie poster, <laughs> you kind of see that the plant is the villain. So, yeah. Okay, so Seymour was played by Rick Moranis. Audrey was played by Ellen Green. Mr. Mushnick was played by Vincent Gardenia. Uh, Oren Scrivello DDS was played by Steve Martin. And the voice of the fabulous Audrey Two or Tui, was voiced by Levi Stubbs. We're so happy he said yes. The music in this film is fun. Alan Menken, Howard Ashman, bravo, men, bravo. Just, ugh. If you've never seen this musical, I do highly recommend it. I do prefer the stage version to the movie, but the movie is still really fun. And the movie was made in the 80s, so I can get away with this, because the play was made in the 70s, and we didn't do the 70s, so ha 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 ha. So Seymour is our protagonist, Seymour Krellborn. This is Seymour. This is my tot. A tot is a tater tot-like shape that I can create into anything I want. This is my own little creation. So this is Seymour. He looks a lot like the Broadway version because that's what I made last year. I was going to make another version, but basically he wears the same outfit except for the baseball cap. So, you know, he does wear a baseball cap, just not when he's wearing the brown outfit, I don't think. I don't know. Anyway, we're not here to talk about Seymour, but here he is. And then if I can find the picture, I actually created a small little Tui to go with him last year. I think I made him because it was September 21st, which is the official Broadway day and Little Shop of Horrors day for Broadway fans. So yeah, I know it says 23rd in the movie and I don't really know why, why they had to move it a, a couple days. 21st was fine, but anyway. So here's Seymour. But for my project, I made Audrey. Not Audrey too, Audrey. Here she is. This is her somewhere that's green outfit. Yes, I hand painted all of these flowers. <laughs> so she's got her hair, her makeup, her sling, and her white dress with the black roses, which I'll be honest, for years I thought was cow print. Now that I know that it's black roses, it makes a lot more sense. <laughs> also, you can't really see on this lace, but these are flowers. It's a flower lace. Everything about Audrey has to do with, she loves flowers. You can tell she loves flowers. It's one of the things she and Seymour have in common. She absolutely adores anything that has to do with uh, flowers. There's flowers all over her apartment. There's flowers all over her costumes. We'll get to that. And there's flowers all over her dreams. So um, this is her outfit that she sings somewhere that's green. And um, that's the one where she has the little fantasy about just living out with a white picket fence and a washer and a dryer and two kids and secretly, but she's never told him, she loves Seymour. He loves her too. They've never told each other. Her reason for not saying anything is she has a dark past, which you don't really get into, and that's probably good. We don't really know what her past is. She just says that she's not worthy of somebody as great as Seymour. So she dates Oren, who is, you know, jerk is too nice a word for him. But anyway, see her arm? Yeah, she dreams of like a Betty Crocker Homes and Garden magazine life. And it's very sweet. It's a very sad little dream, but it's, it's a beautiful song. Anyway, I like this outfit. I thought it would be kind of fun and a little challenging because my tots have never had arms before. <laughs> 
so I had to create at least one arm so that she had her sling. <laughs> anyway, I noticed Audrey's outfits tell a story. They do. And don't tell me it wasn't intentional and that I'm reading too much into this because one of the um, influences for Frank Oz was Alfred Hitchcock. As you already know, I absolutely adore Hitchcock, and everything Hitchcock does is intentional. He could have written a Marvel movie. Every little detail you see, nothing is insignificant. Even if it's a red herring, it's significant. So I, I love that. One of my favorite examples is Psycho. Everything that Marion wears in the first half of the movie is light colors. And then as soon as she makes a bad decision, boom, everything in her world, she has dark colors. Even in black and white, you can tell it's, fan it's fantastic. Anyway, so Audrey's costumes. Because this entire film is about plants, I'm sure that all of the flowers were intentional. Her first one is this beautiful, black, simple dress. It is very tight, very slinky, and um, it's very simple. And as you can see, her cleavage is very clear. And uh, you may have noticed something else. Yes, she has a black eye. I believe this woman is wearing black because she is in mourning, in mourning over her life. She's wearing the tight dress, and we'll find out more about that later, but the color, I swear, has to do with this girl is in mourning over her life. She is miserable until Seymour brings out the plant. Okay, her second outfit is the one I showed you. The white dress with the black roses all over it and the lacy sling. First of all, notice the sling because that is something that probably, because her boyfriend is such a jerk. Again, I am being so kind saying jerk. He probably didn't even like let her get a sling. It looks like her scarf. It looks like this is possibly just the scarf that was around her neck. And that is what's keeping her arm in place. We know she's in a cast because it's in the lyrics. So I got a black eye and my arm's in a cast. I mean, that's in the lyrics. But other than that, yeah, I don't think he let her get medical attention, so. Now her dress is white, but there's black roses all over it. Black roses signify mourning and death, but I, I do love them. But to be fair, I love Turkish black roses, which are actually technically purple. Anyway, still she's wearing black, mainly. Also, we can see this dress is extremely tight. It's got kind of a mermaid shape because it fans out at the bottom, but it's really tight near her knees. And um, again, it's another super tight dress. Don't get me wrong, this dress is gorgeous, but it's again, it's another tight dress. However, she sings somewhere that's green and we get to see her fantasy now. I'm going to put you down. So we can see her fantasy now, how she wants to be dressed it's like this. Big skirt, tight waist, but very cute. Big collars, nice uh, shaped sleeves, and just happy homemaker kind of outfit. Because that's what she wants to be. She wants to be a homemaker. She wants to be a mom. She wants to be a housewife. It's adorable. And this is how she wants to be dressed. Remember that silhouette. Her next dress is actually one of my favorites that she wears in this film and she doesn't wear it for very long and you barely get to see that it's a dress. It looks like a top because she's cut off by a counter, but there's one moment and I think I caught it where she turns around and you can see, ah, it's a dress. Um, so Audrey is wearing this beautiful red dress, beautiful long red sleeves, and off the shoulders with flowers everywhere. It's, it's so pretty. However, do you notice the flowers that are on her dress? Poppies. Poppies are across her dress. Red poppy flowers represent consolation, remembrance, and death. A poppy is a common symbol that has been used to represent everything from peace to death 
to simply sleep. She's miserable and she thinks she doesn't deserve much more than that. She may not be wearing black, but she's wearing poppies. Very, very clearly. Okay, I'll be honest, this is my least favorite dress, but we gotta include it. You can tell Oren picked this out, I'm just saying. Her uh, <clears throat> cleavage is so clear in this dress. It is a tight leopard skin dress. Just a simple leopard skin dress. It is super tight. I mean, it is tighter than all of her other dresses. I mean, some of her dresses look like she has some movement. This one looks like it's almost sewn onto her. It's not, but it looks like it could be. And she has a hard time running in it because later she has to run. And uh, she looks really uncomfortable. This is the scene where Seymour gets to see firsthand how Oren treats Audrey and his little flame of anger begins to grow. So, um, but this is the outfit she wears that I can tell Oren picked this out. So she wears that outfit on a date with Oren, just like she wore the black dress with Oren. Again, super tight silhouettes. The black and white dress, super tight silhouette, where her cleavage is very visible. Although that one is a little more coverage because of the sling that's kind of going across, but anyway. So yeah, super tight silhouettes. Okay, the next time we see Audrey, uh, this is not really a spoiler because I'm not going to tell you what happened, but um, Audrey's boyfriend has been missing for a long time, a few weeks. And so the police get involved and they ask her a bunch of questions and they tell her that they found some evidence that possibly foul play is involved. Now she is wearing the same black dress from the beginning, but this time she has a little white bolero that is lined in fake fur. She's got two thoughts here and I think that's why she's in black and white is because she's got conflicting thoughts. Seymour flat out says, would it be a terrible thing if he was dead? And she says, what a terrible thing to say. And she gets all upset. And he's like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make you cry. And she goes, it would be terrible. And it would be a miracle. So then they sing Suddenly Seymour. And she's basically done with Oren. And she's going to be Seymour's girl. That's very important. Because the next time we see her in anything... She is in my favorite outfit, which is what I kind of was trying to symbolize, um, of the entire movie. And the reason it's my favorite is because if you look at it, she looks free. She looks free. She looks like she's not unhappy anymore. She's got the cutest little outfit on. It's a light pink blouse with a white skirt, pencil skirt, still kind of tight, but not really. But her white blouse is flowy. It's, it's way more loose fit. It's got this beautiful little delicate detail of lace across the top and on the sleeves. And her headband is my favorite part. It is this beautiful little headband that is got white and light pink roses all on the top. I think they're mostly light pink. I think honestly, some of them look white, but I'm pretty sure they're all light pink. And I'll let you know why in one second. But notice, no black. She's not wearing any trace of black or red, nothing like that. She's not wearing a trace of it. Light pink roses symbolize something and I don't think it's an accident. Light pink roses are often associated with femininity, naturalness, grace, and sweetness, gentleness, appreciation, joy, thankfulness, and elegance. She feels pretty, she feels loved, she feels happy, and she's wearing light pink and light pink roses. I don't think that's a coincidence and that's why that's my favorite outfit. So I kind of was symbolizing that a little bit. This is the best I've got, but um, obviously Ellen Green wears it better. Her final outfit is unlike the Broadway play. In the Broadway play, she wears a pink or white nightgown. Again, the pink and the white having to do with she feels clean, she feels pure, she feels happy, she feels sweet. In this one, she's wearing a wedding dress because they changed some things. Seymour proposes to her and she says yes. 
It's not a spoiler. You know they're supposed to end up together. She's wearing a wedding dress, but notice the wedding dress. The wedding dress is the silhouette from her fantasies. It is the tight waist, the big skirt, and the pretty sleeves. It is from her fantasies, and that makes me so happy for her. Also, look at her makeup in the beginning of the movie, and now at the end of the movie. It's a lot less. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say about this musical. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. The play is different from the movie, and the movie has two endings. They made one, and it didn't go well, so they made another one. <laughs> but Little Shop of Horrors, you know a little bit more about Audrey. What do you think of my theory? Considering how the story goes, I think it makes a lot of sense. I could be totally off, but that's my theory. I'm pretty sure this is no accident. Thank you so much for being here today. Remember to check out everybody else's videos. I have one more video for you guys this week. I have a Halloween video and a Halloween live. So don't forget to tune in for both of those. I will see you on Halloween. Remember, life happens, yarn helps, and Spoonies can stitch it up too. Bye.